What's good YouTube? Welcome back. Today is the Lazy Days channel and we're back at it again doing some more history reaction for you guys today and it's some more history marsh content for you and it is the Battle of Canae 216 BC Chapter 2. We're really looking forward to finding out what happens in this episode and in this series. We're going to be doing chapter two and chapter three today, so you will get both videos, so keep an eye out. Really enjoy History Marsh yeah. content, they just make some amazing content. So if you haven't already, head over to their page, the link's going to be in the description box down below. If you guys are enjoying our content, like, like comment, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell, but we are just going to jump straight into this one. Let's do this. Hey guys, the Battle of Kanai has three chapters. If you missed the previous one, you can find it here. Hmm. Some distance north of Kanai, the massive Roman host lumbered forward through the plains of Apulia. When the forward element spotted Hannibal hastily abandoning his camp just ahead, mm, that a little bit. the enthusiastic Roman vanguard rushed forward. The pursuit lacked organization, but for once they caught the Carthaginian general off guard, and they were not about to allow him time to consolidate. But while Hannibal's standard did leave the camp, the Carthaginian general was in fact lurking in the forest. Ah, there he goes. No way. There he goes. He the Romans into an ambush yet again, despite their extensive scouting efforts. Holy shit. Panic gripped the Romans, and it seemed like another disaster was afoot. But Consul Varro quickly rallied the troops and reformed the lines, managing to beat back the Carthaginians. Mm. Hannibal committed significant forces in an effort to destroy the Roman vanguard and shatter the morale of the Republic's the army in yet another ambush. But the legionaries he met on that rainy morning showed the kind of determination he hadn't faced before. Hmm. <laughs> so he thought it was going to be an easy wipeout, but... It's and as a fan of our not, channel, you should definitely yeah, check out not, our friends and over also the Curiosity like, Stream, now, my personal um, favourite streaming Hannibal service that features that got thousands of documentaries the geared Romans, towards yeah. life. It's late July 216 BC. As the Roman column approached, word reached Paulus and Varro that the supply depot at Cannae fell into Carthaginian hands. Right. The two consuls were alarmed by the news, knowing that Hannibal now had the resources to camp throughout the winter with little need to forage or pillage the surrounding area for supplies. Mm -hmm. This would keep the Carthaginians sheltered and rested, and would undoubtedly help Hannibal maintain high morale among the troops mm. over the coming months. Okay. Meanwhile, Paulus and Varro were aware that, with their logistics disrupted, maintaining and supplying their vast army in the field would present numerous problems. From their perspective, a well-supplied Hannibal could now, in theory, try to play for time and prolong the war well into next year, which would give him plenty of opportunities to gain political points and successfully persuade Rome's allies in southern <coughs> Italy to join him. For the Roman leadership, the thought of a possible cascade of defections on their peninsula was unacceptable. Hannibal had to be dealt with. However, while surveying the battlefield, disputes began over where to fight the planned battle. To the south lay Cannae on a line of hills, with undulated land beneath the hillsides and a very flat plain north of the river Alphidius. In ancient times, the river itself is suspected to have had a different course, which ran further away from the hills, oh, and the okay. area surrounding it was mostly treeless, cultivated, open country, much like today. Paulus wasn't pleased with the ground, mm. arguing that the flat terrain favoured Hannibal's more numerous and better cavalry, mm -hmm. expressing his preference to move the camp into the hills to the west, where the more broken ground would be more suited to infantry and would restrict cavalry maneuvers. Varro disagreed, correctly pointing out that the legions performed best on fairly open ground. 
expressing his willingness to give battle even in the open country north of the river, mm. despite Hannibal's superiority in cavalry, but arguing that deploying the army in the undulated terrain south of Alphidius would also suit the Roman infantry, whilst the river and the hills would restrict any extensive Carthaginian cavalry maneuvers on the flanks. Both consuls were clearly concerned about the mobility of Hannibal's cavalry. As you should be, yeah. Varro was certainly more eager to fight, and contemporary sources put this down to inexperience, whilst describing Paulus as the more level-headed mm. of the two. Okay. But Paulus's plan was problematic in many ways. The Roman host was very large, and was composed of a mix hours. between newly trained troops and more experienced legionaries, okay. which made movements, maneuvers, and deployments of the army a slow process, which would have been even slower in the broken ground mm. that Paulus suggested, despite other advantages such terrain would offer. In addition, it is doubtful that Hannibal would accept a battle against a numerically superior army in a well-defended position, unsuited for his cavalry. He would have likely arrayed his troops in the plain below to taunt and challenge the Romans. Yeah. And if they didn't come down from the hillsides to fight, he would use this as propaganda to show off the Republic's weakness to mm, its Italian so. allies. Worse, Paulus's plan to move into the hills to the west meant that the Romans would perhaps be forced to wait until an opportunity for a battle arose, and that could have potentially kept the army in the field for a long time. Mm. Feeding and supplying so many troops for a prolonged period would have been a major problem, whilst Hannibal now held the most important supply depot in the area, at Cannae, and could afford to wait. In addition, it is unlikely that Paulus completely refused the idea of giving battle on the flat terrain, because just like Varro, he understood that the Roman camp was already too close to Hannibal. Therefore, repositioning to the western hills would essentially require them to disengage. But any withdrawal from the field in the face of the enemy was very difficult and dangerous, <coughs> especially for an army dominated by infantry that faced superior cavalry, who could pick them off piecemeal and potentially cause a rout. Mm, okay. Furthermore, despite being an open country, retreating from an outnumbered enemy would be deeply dispiriting for the troops, especially given that the Senate, the army, and the people of Rome wanted to fight and destroy Hannibal. In every sense, the Roman yet. army was now committed and could not easily pull away from the field without a battle. Therefore, whatever misgivings Paulus had, Varro's preference to fight as soon as possible was not at all unreasonable under the circumstances. One thing I've got to say, right, is um, when he was like, it's, you, you can't run from an enemy that's weaker than you in, te in his way of numbers. Well, you, you can, it just doesn't look... Yeah, right. I would have no problem running from someone who has less people with me than but, me, but stronger I've people. seen what he's done to other people and what he yeah. can do. I've not got a problem with that. Yeah. If you've got that many men and you're both strategically concerned about but, how you're going you to take this, think, you have got to think about yeah. the morale of your men. You've got to think about the morale of the how men. How many of those men are going to want to stay with you if you? Yeah. If you're not no, in. I get that. Because not everyone sees it the same way as you. Yeah. No. 100. percent Obviously. Yeah. But it's it's just crazy that. And also, you've got to think these two men are like. You've got the consoles, you, so they're also fighting for political power. As I well. mean, how does it look back back at the, like? Both of them on their own would completely fail. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I'm but, not, I'm not disagreeing with you. Yeah, Varro's to too hot-headed. Wants to go for it. No, it's Polius. Uh, okay, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. Polius is kind of like the more yeah, you yeah. need to generally think about this. Yeah. But if you split them both up. Yeah, both of them have no chance. I it's, think yeah, it's not the combined. It's just like the the mentality both of them yeah. have working together, going off. Yeah, yeah. I definitely I see where you're coming from I would also be of the same thought process of I am happy to retreat but yeah. I need to come up with a good way of how to convince my men that that is the best thing to yeah. do you know Paulus came from very different backgrounds Paulus was the grandfather of Scipio Emilianus okay. who was the principal financier of the famous Greek historian Polybius the main contemporary source for the second Punic War mm. 
Being paid by Paulus's immensely influential and wealthy family, it is easy to see why Polybius portrayed the consul in such a positive light, claiming that it was he who solely raised the morale of the army and made major efforts to organize the newly formed legions, whilst mentioning Varro only in passing as his colleague, not including him in his writings at all during the campaign until Hannibal was sighted. And even then, Varro is portrayed as somewhat of an inexperienced hothead, in contrast to the supposedly more sensible Paulus. This can make it difficult to separate propaganda from the truth. I mean, he's <laughs> However, it is true that Paulus had more military experience, having previously served as consul in 219 BC and was campaigning in Illyria. But after being involved in a scandal with the distribution of war plunder, he was keen to avoid further stains on his reputation <laughs> during his second consulship in 216 BC, which may have been part of the reason for his cautiousness prior to the battle. Okay. In military yeah. terms, the Illyrian War was a combined operation between the navy and the army, but there were no pitched battles. So despite the demands this campaign must have had on Paulus as a general, the conflict in Illyria did not require yes, the skills needed for controlling a massive fire, field it, army. Mm. And since his reputation was embellished in Makes contemporary no sources, we have no reliable way of knowing how good of a commander he was. In contrast, Varro was a novus homo, a new man one of the very few in any generation of Roman political circles to be the first in their family to reach high office. Oh, shit. Contemporary sources further smear him by describing his ancestry as humble and poor, claiming that his father was a butcher and that Varro himself worked in the shop during his youth. Mm. Despite being described as a brutish simpleton, in reality, a new man needed substantial political ability to win elections against opponents yeah, from debated. old prominent mm. Roman families and their many clients who voted for them. Varro could not parade the achievements and high status of his ancestors and had to find other ways of making his name known to the public in a voting system that heavily favored the rich which, in a way, made him an underdog. Mm, okay, this shows okay. that Varro must have been a shrewd politician who managed to gain the support of influential aristocrats and senators, all of whom looked to invest in a candidate that would aggressively confront Hannibal, a desire that was widespread in all political circles in Rome. <laughs> the really in addition, changes to Roman laws in 217 BC made really it nearly impossible for a consular candidate without military experience to be elected, regardless of the influence and prestige of his financiers. Mm. So while Varro never held senior command, considering the serious crisis that Rome was in at this stage of the war, it is reasonable to assume that he could not have been made consul without certain military qualifications. Mm. Okay. On the second day came Varro's turn to command. He led the army towards a position closer to the enemy, despite objections from his colleague. Hannibal responded by sending out groups of cavalry and light infantry to harass and slow down the advancing enemy column. Seeing the incoming Carthaginians, Varro closed ranks and the column only barely continued to move forward. A series of skirmishes caused significant confusion in the Roman ranks, but Varro's formed close order infantry drove back each attack. Nice. The sporadic okay. fighting went on until dark, without either side gaining an edge or inflicting losses on the enemy. But the mm. Roman progress to a new campsite slowed down to a crawl because they were forced to maintain a constant fighting line, eventually encamping Keeps when night well. fell. Yeah. You picked up all your camping gear. You Paulus, it. You still supposedly it reluctant to, to give battle in this terrain, took charge of the army next morning and continued the advance towards the site chosen for the main camp, marshalling the troops to close the distance with the Carthaginians. Okay. Meanwhile, Hannibal was still positioned on high ground near Cannae, south of the river, observing enemy movements without taking any action. Mm -hmm. The Romans proceeded to aggressively take control over the battlefield. 
Two thirds of the army remained in the main camp, while the remaining one third of the troops was sent across the river Aufidius. Setting up a second camp showed the determination of the Roman leadership to put pressure on the movement of enemy troops, whilst taking up a position from where they could protect their own foraging so parties that ventured close yeah. to Cannae. Yeah. More importantly, this aggressive stance served to build up the confidence of the troops. Okay. Hannibal countered by advancing down from the high ground towards a new camp location most likely the flat plateau atop a ridge west of the main Roman camp, leaving a garrison to guard the fortified depot at Cannae. The size of the Roman host was clearly on his mind as he continuously spoke to the men, encouraging them that this is why they came to Italy. Challenging the Romans for control over the battlefield showed Hannibal's belief in victory, which raised the spirits of the men. Okay, okay. The new camp was in a fairly good defensive position, overlooking the plain below, with the river nearby offering the crucial water supplies. These horses On the last the day of July, them. the Carthaginian general ordered the troops to prepare for battle. The camp was abuzz for much of the late afternoon, as the men sharpened their blades, cleaned their weapons, armor and clothing, wanting to look their best and most intimidating once the battle commenced. Early on August the 1st, the Carthaginian army marched out of their camp. On the Roman side, Paulus was once again in command. He posted covering forces in front of the palisades of each camp, but the legions stayed close to the ramparts and little was done to provoke a battle. Hannibal, meanwhile, took the initiative and dispatched his Numidians across the river to attack the secondary Roman camp. Okay. He kept the rest of the troops arrayed for battle, facing the enemy camp for several hours. He exploited oh. Paulus's reluctance to give battle to raise the confidence of his troops by impressing upon them that the Romans lacked the will hmm. to fight. Across the river, the Numidians were ordered not to press the camp directly but to harass the foraging parties, mostly consisting of servants gathering water supplies, and chase them from the field. I was gonna say, I, For I, Hannibal, this was another way to humiliate the Romans and show to his Suck troops your water the ability out, of the enemy <laughs> to counter the Numidian raid and protect their foragers. Some of the Roman officers felt ashamed with how the day went, resolutely wanting to turn things around and the troops were especially displeased with the delay. Okay. No, Undoubtedly, it. the two consuls read the mood of the camp. And on August 2nd, Varro decided to fight. Is it just Varro that's fighting? Mm. The two armies crossed the river Aufidius at various points and marched onto the dust-blown flat plain below the town of Cannae. Yet the Romans still weren't sure that Hannibal would give battle, so they left a 10,000-strong garrison in the main camp. It was Paulus who insisted on this, arguing that besides guarding the baggage, this force could also threaten Hannibal's mm. camp and cut off his okay. line of retreat once the battle went very in smart. favor of the Romans. That is a very smart move. However, yeah. Hannibal wasted no time in deploying his army, sending out his light troops to form a protective screen for the main body. Nice. Varro too sent out the Velites to mask the process of deployment from the enemy. Let's see. There are suggestions that the Roman leadership didn't actually expect the more mobile Carthaginians to fight on such a narrow and confined battlefield, mm. and merely wanted to deploy the legions in front of the enemy to boost morale and rebuild their confidence after being humiliated back then. the day before is, for refusing to narrow. fight. Compared Such to how many men they've got, yeah, building yeah. Up the that is insane. how many men they've got, and some of the battlefields we've seen. Oh yeah, I remember some of those Napoleonic yeah. you know, battlefields. Like. The men were common in the battles I don't of this period, about distance, but it is far it, more it probable like, that the Romans yeah. did, yeah. in fact, fully intend to fight like, this battle like, on the ground of their own also. choosing. Yeah. Whatever the case, Hannibal is said to have had forty thousand infantry and ten thousand horse. 
while the Romans fielded around 70,000 infantry and 6,400 cavalry. 6,000 skirmishes. Varro placed a screen of around 15,000 velitus in front of the main line. 4,000 allied horse were positioned on the left under his direct command, while Paulus was in charge of the 2,400 Roman cavalry deployed on the right. To compensate for their numerical inferiority, the squadrons of horsemen were packed in a tighter formation okay. with no more than 1.5 meters between each rider. Room to maneuver the horses wasn't necessary as their role would be purely defensive while the infantry drove the attack forward. I see, I see. Right, okay. Regular Roman infantry was mixed with the cavalry to give more stability to the static squadrons. Uh, I see. We'd not would have been Servilius one of commanded the 55,000 Roman <laughs> legionaries and allied troops in the center, arrayed in a much deeper and more tightly packed triplex Akis. Varro um. used the overstrength maniples to add depth to the infantry formations. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, he reduced the gaps between the lines to bring the full weight of the legions to bear, aiming to overwhelm the enemy. He knew that, at Trasimene, the Roman heavy infantry held off the Carthaginians for hours, inflicting significant losses mm -hmm. despite being in an unfavorable position. And the year prior to that at Trebia, the legions hacked their way through the Carthaginian center, getting the better of both the Gauls and several contingents of Libyans, Hannibal's best infantry. Ooh. It's worth noting that the tighter maniple formations restricted the tactical flexibility, but eased the coordination of the massive army. And more importantly, the deeper formations possessed longer endurance in a direct confrontation. Mm. Thus, the Roman leadership was confident that the legions can outmatch the enemy and crush Hannibal's center yet again. To achieve this, Varro chose the battlefield wisely. He packed the legions on a narrow front, with the river and the hills near Cannae protecting the flanks yeah, from envelopment. This would force the Carthaginian horsemen the into a frontal line. charge, oh, yeah. and the Roman cavalry was tasked with delaying long enough for the legions to finish the job. If they could break through the Punic center, it wouldn't matter if the weaker Roman horse lost a fight on the wings, because at that point, the Carthaginian cavalry couldn't do much more than harass the large block of legions. The selection of the battleground at Cannae could allow the heavy infantry to smash their Punic enemy. We do not know if Varro alone planned this, or if he was assisted by Paulus, Servilius, and other members of the Roman leadership. The Roman plan was simple, but, but efficient. Nice. Meanwhile, Hannibal placed around 6,000 Spanish skirmishers and up to 2,000 renowned Balearic slingers as a mm. screening force in front of the army, instructing them to raise as much dust as possible to hide the disposition of the troops. Okay. Behind them Our formed the close order hours. infantry with 21,000 like, Gallic like, warriors. Like making to create a dust field, has he literally just gone, you 6,000 men, just run left to right? Just start running back. Just run, yeah, yeah, yeah. Run. Just run, just run, just run. Could you imagine doing, having to do that for hours? And then you've got a charge towards the enemy. Mate, give us a minute, mate. <laughs> I've um, pulled a hamstring like You can't in. just stand. That's not going to do enough. Like, you're going to have to run. Yeah, you're going to have to constantly, like, move yeah. left and, and it's right. And it's going to be like, it's going to have to be a sprint. Like, you're you're going to have to be, like, kicking it proper up. kicking it up. Like... <laughs> I am a horse, sir. <laughs> <laughs> up the bulk of the main line. 3,000 veteran Spanish infantry were interspersed to strengthen the center. But unlike at Trebia, where his main line collapsed because he amassed all of his infantry to try and match the Romans and didn't keep any reserves for decisive action and to plug the gaps in the line, this time he positioned the 8,000 Libyans, his best, most disciplined men, in the rear, hiding them from view behind the formations in the front. Nice. On the oh, Punic okay. right were 4,000 Numidian horsemen, commanded by Hanno, tasked with holding the flank, while on the opposite side, the Carthaginian general placed 2,000 Spanish and 4,000 Gallic cavalry under the command of Hasdrubal planning to overload the left flank 
in a direct attack on the Roman right, hoping to smash the enemy cavalry and threaten the legions from the rear. Okay. Oh, Neither side was intimidated by the other. Gallic How? and Spanish How? troops had the confidence of past victories against the legions, while the Romans trusted in their superior numbers, remembering that even in prior defeats, their heavy infantry often prevailed in hand to What are you thinking? Right. Hannibal left men in the garrison to keep it protected, and it's not been mentioned the entire way so far, right? Yeah, yeah. I, he's got 10,000 in the Roman camp on the left yeah. for encirclement. Hannibal left how many men? I don't know. I don't think he left any men. <sighs> no, I think it was only it was only um, the Romans who left men in their camp. So they've only so left the 10,000 in there. He's got a certain amount in the garrison. Yeah, I'm it. hoping the garrison something's going to happen in that garrison. They can't leave it. Because then if they leave it, yeah, they the won't, yeah but they it, might, they might do something. Gone. I don't know if they're going to do something though. They're too far away from the battle. To yeah. I'm not too sure. They might do. Uh, I, I am more interested to see what these um, these cavalry do. Maybe yeah. to get to the rear. Oh, what, um, you reckon go up the left line? It may be, yeah. He might even send some of them over the river. I don't know. That's what I'm... Yeah, yeah but... Would you want to risk it with the it's, ten thousand in that it's camp? The, it's the the soldiers at the back who are hidden as well that are useful. Yeah. Because um, if the Romans think that they've just had an easy victory and then like, like, like this is what I'm saying about yeah. the garrison, that easy victory maybe, coming through. Maybe, but we, we shall see. Let's we find out. And to hand combat against the Punic troops. Then, around midday, like a lumbering beast. The Roman formation moved forward. The Carthaginian cavalry on the left led the line, trotting at pace, while the light infantry of both armies moved ahead of the main lines to open the engagement. Now, hidden behind the dust raised by the screen of skirmishers, Hannibal made his move, advancing with the main line to form a crescent formation that would bulge towards the enemy. Okay. He understood that the Romans chose this narrow battlefield to deploy their army as a battering ram, and that I his see. outnumbered infantry stood no chance of stopping the legions if they tried matching them man for man. Right. Therefore, the bulged line was supposed to absorb the attack and then slowly retreat, to buy time until the cavalry attack on the left unfolded. Hannibal personally commanded the troops in the center mm. with the help of his youngest brother, Margo, for these troops would bear the brunt of the Roman assault, and it was vital that they held out as long as possible. Okay. Okay. As the skirmishing between the light troops began in the middle of the field, Carthaginian riders on the left advanced full tilt towards the Roman citizen cavalry. With veteran officers leading the way, the Spanish and Gallic squadrons stayed compact, doubling up on and dispersing the first lines of Roman horsemen, quickly penetrating their formation. Some of the Roman riders dismounted to fight on foot, but the Carthaginians swarmed their positions, dragging their opponents from their seats. But despite outnumbering the Romans three to one, the confined space largely negated the numerical advantage of the Punic riders, mm. and Hasdrubal did well to tightly control his men, managing mm. to overwhelm the Romans in a brief, furious charge. The Roman cavalry couldn't cope, and most of them broke and fled, with the Carthaginians now in hot pursuit. Others huddled together to hold off the Punic onslaught for as long as possible. Paulus himself escaped the carnage with his retinue and moved to rejoin the fighting in the center. Okay. Right. Meanwhile, on so the opposite leg flank, from them. the Numidians pinned down the allied Italian sure cavalry with hit guard, and run right? attacks, with Should neither side able so to gain an advantage. In the center, after a long exchange of projectiles, the skirmishers retreated behind the close order infantry mm -hmm. as the Roman legions closed in. Okay, okay. The massed ranks of legionaries must have been an intimidating sight, advancing slowly while but clashing their weapons the, the right against the wooden side, shields, and whilst the trumpeters added to the cacophony of noise. <laughs> the trumpeters! As an almost solid <laughs> <laughs> rank of armoured legionaries clashed with the enemy, 
Hannibal's advanced center narrowed the width of the initial contact, reducing the deadly momentum of the Roman attack. See. The bare-chested Gauls hacking at the enemy with their long slashing swords, and the Spanish in their white tunics thrusting forward with their short blades, mm. stood firm and held back the enemy for a time. But as more Roman troops entered the fray, yeah. the weight of the legions yeah. drove back the mixed Punic formation. Roman velators supported the attack, while the Carthaginian light footmen were ordered to reinforce the flanks of the infantry. Hannibal and his officers barked orders at the men, telling them to stand off the Roman assault and slowly move back. Already overwhelmed by the wall of Scutum shields pushing them back, mm. ordering the troops to retreat further in the face of the enemy was fraught with risks. All it would take is a few men buckling under pressure yeah. to cause slight cracks in the line that could quickly break the formation and turn into a rout. But the Carthaginian general and his Punic captains led from the front, fighting alongside the troops cool. in the first cool. lines, encouraging the men to hold their nerve, carefully controlling their withdrawal. That's leadership. Mm -hmm. Hannibal knew that he had to stay in the fight and buy time until events elsewhere on the field unfolded. And for now, the line held. And he's still got his troops at the Close concert, to the yeah. hills on the right, the light Numidian yeah, horsemen fought thinking. in small groups, throwing their javelins the, the and rapidly retreating the before the enemy could pin them yeah. down. Yeah. However, their attacks caused very little damage, and Varro simply remained in place, making no effort to drive them back. Mm, okay. The main role of the Roman cavalry was to prevent the enemy from flanking the infantry formation long enough until the main assault of the legions broke through the center. But on the other flank, the superior Carthaginian horse have by now decimated the Roman cavalry, completely routing them from the field. Next, Hasdrubal could move against the rear of the Roman center or help surround Varro's allied cavalry on the right. But first, he had to regroup and allow his men and horses time to rest who were by now exhausted from pursuing the fleeing enemy yeah. cavalry. Okay. Back in the center, as the Carthaginian infantry fell back before them, the Romans pressed on, prodding and cutting through the retreating enemy line. Sword in hand, the centurions and tribunes shouted orders through the mm. deafening noise of the screams and the clattering of weapons, urging the maniples to charge together sending more and more men into the concaved Punic center, which seemed like it will soon oh break. God. Conversely, Hannibal and Margot pushed the men to resist a while longer, trying to gain every precious second, hoping that the Spanish and Gallic cavalry will come to their aid. Mm. But as more and more legionaries were drawn inwards, the Roman breakthrough was inevitable. Yes, the pressure so on the center finally broke the Punic line. The Gauls and Spanish at first either. moved back facing the enemy, with flurries of fighting still occurring, but before long, they turned and routed. The Romans shouldn't chase here. With the enemy now on the yeah. run, the Paulus and Servilius up. poured more men into the gap, refusing to give the Carthaginians any chance to rally and reform their lines. The overcrowded Roman center surged forward into the salient. That just looks like chaos. Hannibal's mm. infantry on either side of the gaping hole managed to maintain their lines, but were nevertheless forced to retreat in yeah. good order. Meanwhile, up the field, Hasdrubal had reformed his squadrons and charged at Varro's formation. Realizing that he could not move against the legions in the center before the threat of Roman cavalry was removed. Until okay. now, Varro successfully held the flank, but seeing the incoming Carthaginians, the consul knew that the Roman cavalry on the other wing must have routed. Mm. He could not see what was going on in the center. Uh. Unsure if the day was lost and facing annihilation himself against a force three times his own, Is he running? Varro He's fled the field. He legged it. Yeah, he legged the it. Numidians gave chase, while Hasdrubal once again had to stop to rest and reform his cavalry, before he could turn them towards the rear of the Roman infantry. Back in the center, legionaries in their oh, tens of no. thousands pressed forward to complete oh, the route of the enemy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, 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 he's coming. lost all cohesion, 
turning into a disorganized mob that yeah. rushed forward with their officers barely able to control small groups of men in their own immediate vicinity. Mm -hmm. This mattered little, however, as the Romans could taste victory, having punched straight through the enemy's center. Nah, nah, Hannibal dude, relied on trickery here. and ruse in his prior go. victories, go but it now seemed that the clear field at Cannae offered no possibility for him to set up an ambush. But as the mass of Romans streamed forward, they found themselves between the columns of Libyan infantry that moved against the pursuing the most troops. The most experienced. Incredibly, the Carthaginian general outwitted the Romans yet again. Oh, By carefully masking the position of the Libyans behind his <laughs> troops in the front and using the clouds of Filthy. dust raised by the fighting, Hannibal concealed his best infantry from the enemy on mm. an open field, luring on the greatest army field. Rome has ever assembled into an ambush. <laughs> oh, God, you're so sexy. Letting the legions oh. outflank themselves. <laughs> they let the legions outflank themselves. The Libyans pressed the over and now the cavalry's coming in the mass on both sides. The momentum of the Roman attack dissolved. And the troops were no longer under anyone's control. That's it. That's You're the done, sir. You're Margo done. Rallied most of the routing you are Gallic done. and Spanish troops, turning to rejoin the fighting. While on the opposite side of the field, Hasdrubal charged into the rear of the enemy infantry. As the compression of the legions began, the utter defeat of the Roman army was now inevitable. He's boxed them in. He's boxed them in. He's boxed them in. They could no longer <coughs> reform their lines. To make matters worse, Libyan troops looked similar to Roman legionaries, having been equipped with Roman armor, helmets, and shields that they stripped from the dead at Trebia, Trasimene, and Geronium. Oh no. The legionaries felt they were no longer protected on the flanks, and with the enemy seemingly amongst them, their nervousness soon turned to panic. Hannibal turned the strength of the Roman infantry, their deep, overwhelming formation, against them. As their ranks contracted under the pressure of multiple attacks, centurions and tribunes tried in vain to improvise as movement became ever harder in the confined space. Paulus and Servilius fought heroically, leading a stiff resistance, but both were eventually cut down during mm. the fighting. Small groups of legionaries tried forming rough formations, but most were too exhausted and stood no chance against the fresh Libyans who were kept in reserve for most of the day. Oh, you feel Some of the Roman troops, weary and fatigued, simply gave up, no longer having the strength to raise their weapons. As the hours passed, the battle became a one-sided massacre. The fighting Just went on until smaller, dark. Smaller. There was little to no tactical sophistication in this final stage no. of the battle, as the Carthaginians systematically slaughtered most of the trapped infantry. Completely in the end, widespread slow. Roman resistance collapsed, mm. and those who had any strength left in them managed to flee towards the Roman camps and the nearby towns. Hannibal had won an unbelievable victory. I didn't think he was going to win this one. Nah. By sundown, some 50,000 Roman infantry and 2,700 cavalry lay dead or dying. Jesus! The, the gory sight Holy gave shit. pause even to the most hardened of observers, as nearly 3,000 tons of human flesh was left to rot in the August sun. The true fruits of Hannibal's tactical. Said 3,000 tons. 3,000 tons of human flesh. Do you know how much that is, Jack? That's a lot. He'd literally... I reckon you could fill up a football stadium with dead bodies with that. More. 3,000 tons of just flesh. Flesh. Yeah. 3,000 tons. <laughs> oh... No, 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 no. <laughs> well, at least the crows got big and fat. 
<laughs> fucking wildlife must have been off his tits out there, mate. Imagine being oh, the clean-up crew for that. Mate, could you imagine they didn't go hungry for ages? God, oh, my God. Fucking hell. What an ambush. Wow. The masterpiece. But achieving right, a master this slaughter mm. cost Hannibal dearly. 5,700 of his men fell. A high figure for a victorious army in ancient times, yeah, which is testament yeah. to the harsh fighting on the day. Although it is worth noting that the Carthaginians were significantly outnumbered until the very end of the battle, which also played a role in the relatively high casualties for Hannibal's army. <sighs> Nevertheless, battle? the Roman leadership was decimated. Consul Paulus, Proconsul Servilius, and Marcus Manucius Rufus were killed in the battle, along with 80 senators, uh, senators, two questors, 29 out of 48 military tribunes, some 300 equestrians, with many Fuck. others captured and enslaved. Holy shit. Never Holy has there been shit. a defeat that struck so hard at the very heart of Roman society. Fuck. And yeah, man. As night fell on I'm August so 2nd, 216 this. BC, Rome's Fuck. very future was left in doubt. Credit goes to... Polus led the Roman cavalry on the right flank, a position where the commander was usually straight... Uh, stationed. Stationed. This led to some histori uh, historians suggesting that Polus was in command of the ca uh, canine and not Varro. Given the com... Temporary sources. Okay. Contemporary sources glorified wealthy Polos and deliberately used Varro as a scapegoat. This position, uh, proposition is not too far fetched. Okay. Right. Interesting. What else you got? Any more notes, Chris? There you go. It has been suggested that a Zama Haban uh, Hannibal was quoted saying that he had fought Paul Pallius at Cannae. Indeed, after the battle, Varro continued commanding surviving units and was warmly received by the Senate. This would be in stark contrast to the savage criticism that other defeated commanders were faced with. Well, that is interesting. Uh, I think that is it. There you go, one more. In hindsight, Hannibal's victory was a certain outcome, but in reality, it was a very difficult to pull off and could have failed during several points in the battle, not least when part of his infantry routed. Mm -hmm. okay. Nevertheless, at Canine, Hannibal achieved his greatest victory over Rome, but the war would go on. Stay tuned. Mm, I am definitely looking forward to finding out what happens in the next part of this Bro, series. that's actually mental. It's so that's good. That's mental. I can't believe he pulled it off. I can't believe he pulled I it off. I generally thought he was going to get routed and fully Yeah, I thought, I thought like, he might fully have shit to flee. On. Fully I thought he might have to flee and we'll see what, like, it was going to be the, the sort of turning point oh. for, for Hannibal. But, but apparently this isn't the turning point. I, I, Apparently he got through with this one. Crazy, absolutely outrageous. That's blown my mind, bro. That's it fully has. blown my mind. Yeah, it has. If you guys enjoyed our reaction to that, then please like, comment, subscribe. subscribe. Hit that notification bell, but we will catch you in the next video. See you in a bit.